This is lesson, Go Math Lesson 12.2 for Tuesday, May 12th. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to be looking and using two dimensional shapes to sort them into groups. So we're going to sort them by curved figures and straight figures. So remember that straight figures have to have straight sides on all the sides, and curved figures are all rounded. So if we look at all of our shapes up here that are two-dimensional shapes, we can see we really only have one curved figure. So that's a circle. So we'll draw a circle on the curved side. The all the other figures that we've practiced are straight figures, so you can draw them all here. page 494, we're going to look at those figures again, and this time we're going to be looking at the vertex, vertices and the sides. So remember that a vertex is a corner, okay? and sides are the straight lines that connect them. Okay? So some shapes have straight lines and sides and corners, vertices. So here we can see a trapezoid. We know that it's a trapezoid because it has a shorter line at the top, a longer line at the bottom, and they're kind of angled on the other sides. So it has four sides, one, two, three, four, and four corners, one, two, three, four, four vertices. A hexagon is has six sides, one, two, three, four, five, six, also six corners, one, two, three, four, five, six, six vertices, okay? So down here, you're going to read the name of the shape, draw the shape the best you can, write how many sides it has and how many vertices it has. So a hexagon, they already did for us, that's like a stop sign, remember it has a straight line at the top, a straight line at the bottom, and then it kind of has like a, a sideways V that connects them. Okay. So now count the sides. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six sides. And how many vertices? Corners. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to put a six here. Okay. Here you're going to draw a rectangle. Write how many sides and corners. A square. How many sides? How many vertices? Trapezoids. So if you forgot what trapezoids are, remember there's an example right here. So you can draw that here. How many sides and corners? And a triangle. Okay, on this page you're going to need a red and a blue crayon if you have one. If you don't, you can just use whatever colors you have. That's okay. Okay, use blue to trace each straight side. Use red to circle each vertex. That means of each corner. Then you're going to write the number of sides and the number of vertices. So if I trace with the blue each straight side, I see one, two, three, four straight sides. So I can write that, four blue straight sides. And then red, circle my vertices, one, two, three, four. Four corners, four vertices. Now you go ahead and complete that for the rectangle, triangles, hexagon, and trapezoid. Number 12 says, I am a shape with three straight sides and three vertices. So if we look at all of our shapes that we have on this page, which one has three straight sides and three vertices? So we can see four, four, three, six, four. So that means it would need to be a triangle. So you can draw a triangle here. Number 13, I am a shape with four straight sides that are the same length. That's a key word, make sure you circle that. And four ver vertices. So it cannot be a hexagon because we know that has six, okay? So we can see that a trapezoid has four vertices and four sides. A square has four vertices and four sides, and a rectangle has four vertices and four sides. 
So it could be either one of those, but now let's look at that clue that we circled here. It says four straight sides that are the same length. So if you look at the length of the sides of the trapezoid, are they all the same? No, because this one is short and this one is long. Those are not the same length. How about the rectangle? There's a short side, a short side, a long side, and a long side. They are not the same length. How about a square? We have a side, a side, a side, a side. Are they all the same length? Yes. So we would draw a square here. So we're going to again look at our vocabulary and draw the shape that matches the clues. If you forget, go and look on the previous page. Jake draws a shape that has fewer than five sides. So that means it has to have less than five. So that would be four, three, two, or one. It has three vertices, three corners. So if we look at our shapes, we know there's only one shape that has three vertices, okay? So a triangle has three vertices and three sides, and three sides is fewer than five sides. So that means this would need to be a triangle. So we would just draw a triangle. That matches the clues. Number 15, Meg draws a shape with four sides. She labels it as a trapezoid. Okay, so if it's a trapezoid, we need to remember what a trapezoid looks like. So if we look at our previous page, we know a trapezoid has a short side at the top, a longer side at the bottom, and then they kind of angle. So we're going to draw a trapezoid. So a shorter side at the top, longer at the bottom, and we connect them with kind of an angle. Doesn't have to be perfect, just do the best you can. Ben draws two different shapes. Okay, so now we need two shapes here. They have each have only four vertices. So each shape that he draws here has four corners or four vertices. So it could be a trapezoid, one, two, three, four. It could not be a triangle because that has three, so we can't pick that one. It could be a square. One, two, three, four. It could be a rectangle. One, two, three, four. So we only have to pick two. So you could draw a square and a rectangle. You could draw a rectangle and a trapezoid or a square and a trapezoid. So pick two different shapes and they need to have four vertices. Number 17, circle the number that makes the sentence true. A triangle has blank vertices. Remember, vertices are corners. So you're going to count them, circle them, that will help you, and then circle the number that matches. Okay. And go ahead and do the vertices and sides on the next white page, if you would like. Okay, in your math packet, um, we're going to be on lesson five. Let's just review what we did on lesson four previously. Lesson four was addition. And we used this table and looked at the rule and we added by counting forward on our number line. So remember, if you don't have a number line, you can just make one like I did. Okay, so we went, we added five. So remember, we went to five first and then we added the rule is add five, so that means five hops forward. One, two, three, four, five. So we know five plus five is 10. Okay, then we went to seven and we added five. So seven, five hops. One, two, three, four, five. And we wrote 12. Okay, that you already did. Okay, so this, today's lesson, is exactly the same except for that it is subtraction. The rule is to subtract. So subtraction, remember, is the opposite of addition. So if you go forward on your number line for addition to get a bigger number at the end, subtraction is the opposite. 
So we're going to go backward on our number line to get a smaller number at the end. Okay, so remember in subtraction, we talked about this a lot. The big number always comes first in subtraction. Then we take some away and we should get a smaller number for the answer. The difference is the smaller number. Okay, so if you don't have a smaller number that you're writing, then you know you went the wrong way on your number line. So erase it and try it again. So you need to remind yourself you're going backwards. So put an arrow on the top of your paper to remind you to go backwards for subtraction. You're subtracting, okay? So here we can see our rule is to subtract seven. That means we're gonna be doing seven hops backwards on our number line. So if we have 14 is the big number, remember the big number always comes first, and then we're gonna subtract seven. So seven hops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I can see I land on seven, so seven is the answer, the difference between 14 and seven. 15 is the big number, so I go there on my number line. I take seven hops backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I land on eight, so eight is the difference. Okay. 16 is the big number, I go there on my number line. I subtract seven, seven hops backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My answer is nine. Okay, that's where I land. So on this one, you have the big number, you're gonna subtract three, so three hops back. Here's your big number, subtract four, four hops back. Here you're gonna subtract five, five hops backwards. Here you're gonna subtract eight, eight hops backwards. Here you're gonna subtract seven and subtract six, okay? We're gonna do the same thing on the next page. You're going to follow the rule, and remember you're subtracting, so you're going backwards. Nothing has changed. So if you have seven, uh, let's try 12, and you're gonna subtract nine, go to 12 on your number line, subtract nine. Nine hops back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So write the answer. The difference is three. Remember that the number you write should be smaller than the number you started with. Okay, let's look at number 13. Complete the table. Jane has four cookies, so we see they wrote a four. Lucy has three cookies, so next to Lucy's name, there's a three. And Seamus has two cookies, so we have two. How many cookies will each child have if they each eat two cookies? So if you're gonna eat the cookies, you're taking them away. You're not adding them, you're subtracting them. So that means our rule here is going to be minus two, not plus, because they're eating them. If you eat them, you take them away. So if Jane has four cookies and she eats two cookies, how many cookies does she have left? She has two, because we know two plus two is four. If Lucy has three cookies and she eats two, how many cookies does she have left? Just one. And if Seamus has two and he eats all two of them, how many cookies does he have left? Well, he doesn't have any. So that number is zero. Okay, so don't forget in your subtraction, go backwards on your number line. Have a great day.